This is what I would like to do, voting. I have some Bible verses on the subject of worship. I am going to read this Bible verse, and you are going to tell me what it means or what it doesn't mean, based on the Bible verse without reading into it. Do I get to choose? Either to tell you what it means or to tell you what it doesn't mean? You can do whatever you want. Okay. All right? Let's do 2 Samuel 6.14. David was dancing before the Lord with all his might, and David was wearing a linen ephod. Go. Um, when you dance in church, wear linen. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for making the point. All right. Therefore, David danced in church. Dancing in church is biblical. Huh? Can I use this for a text? Sure. So you don't have a problem with dancing in the church? I do. But this verse says David danced. You can use whatever you want to use, right? All right, well, um, tell me why. But this first verse of all, David wasn't in church. Okay, fair enough. That's but he, was, he did it in worship. David wasn't in church. It was in, he was worshiping the Lord. Yeah, um, very excited about the ark. He was very excited about the ark. Yes. Yes. Um, we don't have an ark. Well, okay. We don't have a king. But I could do that with any verse. We don't have a, But what I'm saying is that when we read this, we have to read this text in its historical context All right. in order to understand okay, what's happening so, so, here. Okay, right? so... Because the other thing is this. Narrative is not normative. Correct. It's a very important principle of, of exegesis. Narrative is not normative. Just because something happened doesn't mean that it's supposed to happen normatively. But, there, but right? there's shadings on that. You know that. Supposed to versus can... Yeah. Happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So how's about if I say to you, okay, fine, voting, so I give you so your can, context. So can a person, can I dance in church? Yes. I'd kind of like to see that. Would you maybe just humor us and show us a couple of moves? Yeah. Not a chance. Yeah. <laughs> okay, now, okay, this is actually, let's, let's, let's keep diving on this. So David isn't dancing in church, so I can't say. So for example. David, David for example, danced, I can dance. Yeah, you can't. For, but. That would be more akin to we've excommunicated someone and we're here at worship. This person we've excommunicated, it was a painful experience for the church. We've been praying for this person. Their life just went to the pit and God saves them and brings them back. Right. And they walk through the doors. There might be a little dancing. That's more akin to what's happening there. An emotional you know, sort of out, outburst in response to a circumstance as opposed to here's how we're going to organize our worship. Fair enough, but there is explicit and implicit. Yeah. So could I not use this as an implicit text to say, look, it's not a sin to celebrate and worship the Lord by moving your body. Sure. Therefore, this verse still gives me permission to no, do that, not no, commanded. Not when you went permitted. to the therefore. Not when you there. Why not? You were okay to the therefore. What yeah. Well, how do you apply it then? Well, because here's the thing. Why do we want to do this? Why do we want to make this a normal activity for I, I us? I wasn't saying to make it it's commanded. I'm saying it's this verse gives us permission to express ourselves in joyful worship to the Lord by busting a move. You could do it. It's not commanded, but it gives me permission. You could do it. You're humoring me now, aren't you? You just want to be done with this. You, no, you could do it. I'm okay. waiting. All right. Let's do John 4. You're not going to do it? Oh, waiting for me to do it? 